Schnell, welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today, we're going to be blasting this four-way split on Desert Wasteland Productions. Chasms of Aeons. Four-way split with Cryptic Shift, Replicant Inoculation, and Astral Tomb. You got some nice Bruce Pennington artwork, who you might recognize from Blood Incantation and a few other bands have used his artwork, but this just got a 12 inch release and it looks glorious. I would really like to get a copy because this is some killer fucking technical and cosmic death metal. It's very, very entertaining. Each band has their similarities, but at the same time, they each have their own sound. And that's what makes this, you know, very, very much enjoyable. Because although you have four bands with similar subject matter and whatnot, each four bands play their own style of cosmic death metal from overly technical to just straight up brutal and it's fucking cool like for example cryptic shift cosmic dreams uk phenomenal technological astro death is how they are described replicant who i actually saw i think Fuck, I forget off the top of my head if I saw them open for Blood Incantation one time. It was either Blood Incantation or a band along those lines. I, I know I've seen them with uh, Outer Heaven, but I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm drawing a blank, but Replicant, they're amazing live, and they're one of those bands... I would always go and see if they had a cassette of their demo so I could review it for you maniacs. But their track on being pummeling death metal from the dystopian reaches of New Jersey. Really fucking cool stuff here. Like, very technical, extremely well written, East Coast cosmic death metal. And we have Ohio's Space Weed Lords Inoculation. Intergalactic alien invaders from the planet known as Cleveland. It sounds like either some 70s exploitation film or some sort of greasy pornographic film from the early 90s. But I think that's kind of cool because if you've ever been to Cleveland, I have bad luck with Ohio. And I'll go into it in a different tale. But Ohio has almost taken my life three times. And one time definitely had the fucking van. I was on a road trip to a contest at a skate park called Chenga World in Akron, Ohio, right outside Cleveland. And we are right, like, past Youngstown. Like, we just passed the Youngstown exit. We're going about 70 miles an hour. We're watching Donnie Darko on DVD. And there's, like, 13 of us in this 16-passenger van. And, like, we have the bikes on a rack. And a couple, like, just, like, piled in with no wheels and stuff. And all of a sudden, my buddy's like, yo, I don't, so, something's wrong. I don't want to drive anymore. And everybody's like, oh, you know, like, dude, man up. Like, we're almost there. Like, let's get this done. My, like, we're, we're rolling up and shit. And uh, next thing you know, my buddy takes over driving. And he's going about 70 and all of a sudden, the back fucking wheel of the van falls off. And you know how in the movies, everybody's like, ah! 
like screaming. In real life, when shit like that happens, it's dead silence. Like you're just waiting to hear that crash. And it didn't come. My buddy just, I, I remember staring at the steering wheel, like just watching his hands. And I saw that he had control a little bit, got us onto the shoulder. And this is like February in Ohio. You know how gnarly the weather can be. So, we all just almost died. The bikes were legitimately that far from hitting the ground. So the tow truck driver comes and it's like fucking 11 degrees. And he's like, I can't take all of you in the truck. There's room for two. Now, we can do something for $40. And we're like, well, we can't just, like, legit, we couldn't just wait on the side of the road. It was way too fucking cold, and it was, like, getting nighttime. It was dangerous. And he's like, all right, this is going to be scary. And we're all like, what? And he's like, just get in the van. And we're all in the van, and you just start feeling it go up a little bit because he towed the fucking thing. And so we're, like, driving... It was fucking sketchy, like, I'll just put it that way. So we get to the shop, and they're like, all right, we'll get it, we'll have it done for you by at least 11 tomorrow morning. The contest started at 1.30. We were like, all right, like, that works perfectly. Like, I was on the trip to sell DVDs and stuff, and if I wanted to enter the contest, I could, but I just wanted to ride Chengo World, so... Anyways... We go to a hotel and afterwards, and remember, I only have $40. So we go to Perkins to eat after the hotel. And we have a meeting point to meet the tow truck driver and whatnot. And everything's going good. And I don't eat anything at breakfast. And we pay and everything. Everybody leaves a tip. I didn't eat anything. Now, I ate a little bit off my buddy's plate. Because he was like, Chanel, you want you want a pancake? I was like, fucking A, man. Like, thanks. And, you know, I ate up. And we're going to wait for the um, tow truck. And we see the cops coming in. And all of a sudden, they open the back door. And the waitress is like, that's them. That's them right there. And the cops like, everybody get against the van. And the tow truck driver's there, too. And we're all like... Because, like, dude, we got, like, weed. Like, a, like, a couple ounces in the fucking van. I'm stressing at this point. I'm like, oh, fuck. And the cop's like, which one of you didn't eat? And I was like... Me? And he's like, how much money do you have? And I thought that was a weird question. I'm like... Um... I gave my buddy $40 for gas. I mean, I'm here to work. And he was like, well, it looks like you're not bailing your friends out of jail this weekend. And everybody starts, what the fuck? Like, and the waitress claimed we did a nice old dine and dash. Completely untrue. We did not dine and dash. This had to have been a nice little scam. Because the lady kept grilling us about, hey, where are you guys from? And we had a lot of people from Jersey, Brooklyn, like pretty much, I think the furthest person with us was from Boston. So we're all, you know, like, oh, I'm from Pennsylvania. I'm from New Jersey. I'm from Boston. I'm from New York. She knew none of us were from Ohio. And she's trying to say we didn't pay for the shit and we did pay for it. And I'm worried at this point. I'm like, they're going to check the van and find the weed and we're all going to jail. So, I'm like, I go to my buddy who I gave the $40 to. I'm like, dude, just fucking pay. Like, it, we'll, we'll take a hit, whatever. Let's just, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Like, this is just getting worse and worse. The angrier everybody's getting, the worse this situation's getting. So, we paid 
back what we owed, although we didn't owe shit, and it was just a disaster. And I have more stories about Ohio, but that one was sketchy. So we get to the contest, I sell out of the DVDs, we go to a party that night. My buddy wasn't thinking, put all the money we made in his jacket pocket, got hot, took his jacket off. We're driving home and he's like, Yo, Chanel, you didn't take the money out of my jacket, did you? Because I wasn't drinking or anything. I was just like making sure everything was okay. Like, Because when some of my friends drink, problems happen. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm like, all right, do I have to fight tonight? You know, like, so I'm not drinking. I'm just baked and whatnot. And he's like, dude, like, where'd the money go? And it turns out we got robbed. Just a shit show. But what's not a shit show is this four-way split. Now, inoculation, they're one of, in my opinions, the best newer technical death metal bands to come out of America. They're just fucking sick. And you have a good bit of, oh my god, abraded as a part of inoculation as well, which is fucking rad because it's two different ends of the death metal spectrum. You have really murky, swampy, heavy death metal in a braided and very, very, like, crispy, well done, very, very guitar-oriented death metal in the form of inoculation. As you can hear, it's fucking awesome. I really like inoculation. I got to see them live, and I thought they were amazing. The way they go back and forth with their vocal patterns, like, the good cop, bad cop vocals work very, very well for them. It's just really fucking good. And their full-length Pure Cosmic Dread, I feel, is nothing compared to their last release, Anatomize. But the track they have on here is badass, I think. And Astral Tomb, though, to me, holds the best track on this four-way compilation. And that is Transcendence from the Mortal Plane Guided by a Familiar Phantasm. Got some Demi Lich-ish weirdness. Like, this is an awesome compilation and highly, highly recommended. But Astral Tomb, Mind exploring and consciousness expanding death metal from the threshold of Colorado. So, obviously, there's a little blood incantation influence. You got a Morbid Angel t shirt and a death t shirt in the promo photo. I'm just trying to see what shirts the bands are wearing here. That looks like an Outer heaven shirt, but I can't really tell. Cryptic Shift just has some cover art, which is badass. But yeah, support death metal, support the underground, support S-E-T-I. We are not alone. Cosmic thanks to Bruce Pennington for the artwork. The Man in the Maze, circa 1982. Awesome, awesome stuff from across America and across the pond when it comes to technical cosmic death metal and just killer death metal in general. These four bands are amazing young death dealers that happen to play a little more technical oriented death metal and it's very enjoyable and the chasm of Aeon's four-way compilation is definitely worth your time. Check it out. You get four tracks. Cryptic Shift, Replicant, Inoculation, and Astral Tomb. This is also available on vinyl. I'm pretty sure the cassette is sold out, but 
Links will be in the video description. Thank you, Aaron, for making this review possible. Hopefully my luck with Ohio in the future changes, but as always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Hails, and remember, we are not alone. <laughs> P.S. I did not show you the cassette cosmetics, because they're pretty fucking cool. I like the little UFO. But also, I did not mention that my buddy ended up getting the LP of this for more than one reason. Um, he said the cassette version wasn't really of the best quality, and I found it to sound fine up until the Astral Tomb track. And I don't know if it's just my copy of the tape. That track, as you could tell when we were listening to it, the volume starts getting really, like, weird and wonky sounding. And, um, I forget if it's on both sides of the cassette or not, because the program repeats itself. I should probably put a mark on the side that does not sound weird when it gets to the Astral Tomb side of things. But, if you have a copy of this, I'm just curious how your copy sounds. Because, as you could hear, if you could he overhear me talking, uh, it sounded fine up until the Astral Tomb song. So that's one of the reasons I would really like to get this on vinyl, because not only is it an awesome compilation, I would like to hear everything just on vinyl. I think it would sound fucking great. And having this on 12 inches... Wow, it would just be amazing. But that's my only downfall when it comes to this release is when I got to that track, I was like, wait, what's going on? And, um, you know, it is what it is. Stuff happens. But if your tape does the same thing, please let me know. But if not, oh, well, that's life. Thanks again for watching. Hoos.